is Angelica Pickles, and you're listening to True Exact Radio. Chatter five of the world to the rock. Walk to the wild with the OU. Go climb in a phone booth. Welcome, everybody, to True Exact Show. I'm here with Eric Elliott, our special guest here, a uh, voice actress, uh, author. You know her from the Rugrats as Angelica Pickles, New Jersey native, by the way. The most important thing as far as <laughs> I'm concerned, much to the chagrin of Ellie. Uh, Cheryl Chase, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Scott. I'm, I'm real happy to be here talking oh. to my fellow New Jerseyites. Thank Minus you one. very much. Minus <laughs> Ellie, but she's just oh. jealous. She's just jealous. They're all jealous. She's getting closer. She moved from California to Texas. Oh, wow. Oh, so you in Texas, Ellie? Yes, ma'am. I sure am. My husband's from Louisiana, so um, we are closer to that side of the family for right now and for oh. grad school and whatnot. But, you know, did you, how did you beat out the New Jersey accent? Like, did you have to like sit there and, and like beat that out of your system? Cause you don't sound like you're from Jersey at all. Well, see, I've been in California for like since the eighties. Mm. Okay. A long time. So it kind of left, but I, but I can bring it back whenever I want, you know, okay. <laughs> like my dad. all day long, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. when yeah. she's stuck in traffic, the jersey yeah, comes out. Yeah, it comes out. It <laughs> comes out. That's fair. I mean, yeah, it's funny you say you lost it. My dad's from Brooklyn, and he's oh. been in California for 30-plus years. Hasn't lost it at all. <laughs> wow. Where in California? Uh, Bay Area, so San Francisco area. Oh, okay. Very good. Now, Cheryl, really, it's really cool because uh, we grew up on the Rugrats. Um, we're a little older now, as you can tell by the scruff I have <laughs> in my face. But yeah. – um. You know, talking to one of you uh, voice actresses from one of our favorite cartoons is really cool. So I really appreciate you coming on here. I, I think it's one of the coolest, unique episodes we've ever done from we've done rappers, Simpsons writers, shark experts. So this is one of the coolest ones. So I just want to thank you very much oh, for staying in for touch. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be on. No problem. So yeah. uh, really quick before we get into some questions, um, you, you, you grew up in New Jersey. Talk about your upbringing and how you you know, went out West to college, like how that was like, and how you got into voice acting to begin with. Oh, well, yeah, I, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just getting over COVID. So oh, I God. This cough is like, never leaves me. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I grew up on, um, let's see, what is it? 16 North 18th Avenue in oh, Manville. And uh, I, I always loved, um, imitating, like, I would watch TV and I would imitate voice, like, this is way bef before your time, but it was the Carol Burnett show that was, mm -hmm. when I was a child, they had that on, and I would mm -hmm. imitate Carol and, and uh, Vicki Lawrence and the different uh, characters that they would do, and I, I always liked making funny voices and imitating the Wizard of Oz voices, and um, so I, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to make people laugh. So um, I went to, I, when I went to college um, at BYU, Brigham Young University, I studied, I studied acting. And, but while I was studying acting, I always um, uh, would go be going up to Salt Lake to try to get into like commercials, voiceover commercials and different jobs doing characters in, in uh, cartoons up in Salt Lake. Because there was a couple of them, and I, I did, um, I did that did happen. So I always had, even though I was studying acting, I always had my dream on doing voiceover work. Hmm. So um, then I left college and I went back, went back to live with my parents in in um, Manville, and but I studied in New York. I studied at the Lee Strasberg Institute, hmm. and then after I was done with that, I moved out to California to try to be an actress and try to pursue voiceover work and um <coughs> excuse me so um it took me four years of, of you know um auditioning and and you know trying to you know get jobs but it took me four years before i finally um uh, got Ren, uh rugrats and ren and stimpy i got them at the same time okay yeah so wow and and i heard on another show you're on you mentioned you were kind of walking down the street and someone came up to you and said you sound like uh, the Wizard oh. of Oz or something? Oh, yeah, that was when I was at college. And that was before um, I thought of that I had this voice to do to do voiceover. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, some, somebody walked up to me 
And uh, they said, you sound just like Glinda the Good Witch in The Wizard of Oz. And I tried, I tried doing the voice and it's, you don't need to be helped any longer. You always had the power to go back to Kansas. Uh. Just close your eyes, tap your heels three times and say, there's no place like home. I'm not warmed up. That was the crappiest version. No, it was good. No, I, you was can fool me, so. <laughs> yeah, that I can't even imitate. On. I can't I even. Over COVID, it's so okay. It's not so Cheryl, I can't even imitate Toto, so you're okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. I can't even bark well, so <laughs> you're fine. Oh, okay. So, yeah. when you went to the when you auditioned for the Rugrats, was there other characters you were auditioning for, or did you just throw a voice out there and they like lined you up a one? Well, what happened was I was working at the Ren. I was working as a production assistant at the Ren and Stimpy show, and yeah. I was really involved with that show and. Um, they, uh, they, but they let me go away on auditions. So there was one day there was this audition for a Rugrats pilot, and the characters were Tommy and Phil and Lil. So I went and I auditioned, and uh, uh, obvious I I didn't hear anything back. Obviously, I didn't get it. But a year and a half later, the pilot was sold, and they had to make more characters. Mm. So they made so they created. Angelica and Chucky. So they brought me back and I tried out for Angelica and the rest is history. I, wow. I got, yeah. And when I was on, I, I, but I was really busy at that time. I was, uh, you know, casting director for Ren and Stimpy show and production assistant. And so I wasn't really thinking, Oh, did I get the job? Did I get the job? So, I mean, I was like doing my thing. And then I, I was working on the Simpsons. I was, um, doing background voices mm -hmm. one day. And I got a phone call in the middle of the session. And they said, hey, you got, you know, Angelica on the Rugrats. And I, and I thought, oh, my gosh, that's so exciting. But we never knew how big the show was going to be. Yeah. Because yeah. when I was working on Rugrats in the beginning, I had to keep my job at, Ren, at the Ren and Simpy production office because mm -hmm. we didn't make a lot of money. You know, it, it was just a new show. And mm -hmm. we didn't think it was going to last, you know, more than a season. Um, but you know, it became a global sensation. So <laughs> a real big blessing. When, when you, um, cause we actually talked to Bill Oakley who wrote for the Simpsons on the show and, uh -huh. and yeah. And he mentioned on the Simpsons that when he was writing, he didn't expect the show to last that long. So yeah. you mentioned you didn't know it was going to be that big when you, so did you just go into it with like, Oh, let's, let's just ride the wave. And when did you realize this is actually taking off? Like when you uh, one well, or two seasons in, um, we realized that it's. <coughs> excuse me, we realized that it started really catching momentum when Nickelodeon decided to put the show. Because in the beginning, it was just on Saturdays and Sundays. I think at ten or ten thirty. Yeah, ten. Yeah, ten. 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 Definitively ten. ten. Huh? <laughs> it was ten o'clock. I said definitively I ten. <laughs> Scott knows. Definitively, it was ten on Saturday. <laughs> ten on Saturday. Yes. <laughs> so they ha so they had it. Then they decided to put it on Monday through Friday at six thirty during the dinner hour when the <laughs> families are together having dinner and they have the TV on. They have Rugrats on, and that and the, it caught the parents. The parents were psyched about this show because it the the writers represented the they had parent the babies had parents and so the parents of the little kids watching the show would watch the show with them to see how the rugrat parents dealt with issues mm. and once once that happened and then they started with the success of that um, time slot they decided to make mo the the movies and once mm -hmm. you got the movies in, I mean, the first movie, the Rugrats movie, that was the first non-Disney movie to gross a hundred million dollars. Now, did you meet Blondie to sing that song? Did you sing that whole thing? How did that no, work? No, I didn't meet her. No, <laughs> oh. was she, Deborah Harry. First Deborah, of all, yeah, De Deborah I, Harry. Yes, I, yeah, that's I right, didn't. Deborah Harry. I um, but I did read a review of this of me singing the song at that time, and I was. Yeah. Really, I mean, I felt really good Deborah. because he said that that Cheryl Chase did Deborah Harry proud, and I thought, wow, that's so cool that that happened. Um, I think Blondie, why did I think Blondie? Did she remake she was that? In Blondie. 
Oh, okay. Well, it's the same thing. You it's know what? It's the same thing. It's the same the thing. No, it's it's not. the same thing. I am chalking it up to the same thing, and I'm not editing that out. <laughs> <laughs> Ignorant. Ignorant. I uh, stand by it. It makes sense in my mind. Sorry yes. about that. Really quick, I want to touch on the movie, and then I swear to God, I'll pass it to, to you guys. Okay. How cool was it to do the Godfather scene in the Rugrats in Paris, yeah. too? Like, when you read that script, you're like, this is so funny. Like, how amazing was that? Oh, no. I, lo oh, I loved it. Uh, because, you know, they were, they were in that room, in that movie, um, uh, Rugrats in Paris. <coughs> it was, um, you know, it was like Angelica had a really big part in it. In, yeah. the, in the movie and so that was really fun for me to act acting wise but i loved doing the the um um bob father's part yes. it was it, great it was something cute and something different and and you know everybody can you know loves the godfather mm -hmm. so so uh yeah I, I it was a highlight for me okay always wanted to know that because yeah. i remember being like 12 watching it and i my father probably showed me the godfather when i was too young but um i remember watching that and was like oh this is he'll like this yeah, <laughs> this is a good one for yeah. both of us then i, then I saw sunny at the toll booth it was like i probably shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> uh, ellie go on okay I, I don't know if it's a faux pas if it is i'm sorry can you do the angelica pickles voice for us i sure can oh my god I'm Angelica Pickles, and watch me every day on Paramount Plus. We have brand new episodes, and I'm starring me, and I'm just amazing. <laughs> oh my god! You come, baby. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, wow! And that's like you. I mean, you said you had to do a warm up, and everything. that is phenomenal. So, did you have to kind of? How did you create Angelica's voice? Was it kind of, did it come naturally to you or were you kind of playing around with various voices and then molded some together? Or how, how does a voice actor come up with a voice for a character? Well, uh, first I read the breakdown and they, it said that, you know, it's, she's a three-year-old who's a little spitfire. Yeah, and, bossy. <laughs> but, but, you know, she's, she, so I thought three-year-old. So when you're three, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> forgive me. Uh, when you're three years old, you, you know, you sound higher. So I use, I was known for doing baby work on, on uh, different various movies like um, Adam's Family Values and, yeah. and, 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 you know, those. And so in order for an actor to um, do a baby voice, you have to constrict your vocal cords really, really tightly, like, <laughs> like that you just t you really tight but for a three-year-old you just you know let it a little looser and and uh, i can talk like this i can't wait till mm. i'm practicing that later my wife <laughs> slaps me what the hell are you doing <laughs> please film it please film it that was, that was phenomenal thank you so much for doing that true and then so did you always want to go into voice acting? I know you said you wanted to go into acting and did you find voice acting and, and then realize, oh, this is kind of really my thing or do you still want to do acting like on screen acting or where are you oh, now? Yeah, um, I've always wanted to do, do um, acting on camera, but when I got so successful with voiceover, it kind of took a, a back seat. Yeah, sure. You no, know, and I got all into doing, you know, my voiceover work. Sure. And it's just not. It's just like now. This time, I'm focusing also on preparing to go on camera. I already have an agent that wants to represent me for on camera, so, and um, you know, so I'm preparing for that. There's a lot of stuff you have to do, like classes oh, yeah. and oh, pictures yeah. and the whole mm -hmm. nine yards. Yeah. So, right. but yeah, it's something that I I want to pursue too. Oh, fantastic! Good for you. It'll be your second act, if as they say. Yeah. In fact, you know, I do this, I, I do this, uh, this character. Her name is Martha Culpepper. And she's an old broad. She's a retired cocktail waitress There's from the Rat Pack. Yeah. And I did, I do this little, this character. And so I did a little video of it and I sent it to the Rugrat producers. And they loved the character so much that they wrote a part in it. They put the character in the Rugrats in the in the cartoon. So this past Thursday, I recorded. No, it's not the exactly how I do the because sure. uh, you know it, it's a it's they created a character and I'm just using that voice 
right to towards the character but they it made me feel good that they loved it so much that they want to put it in rugrats that's so cool to me so awesome. how much of man how much of growing up in jersey and manville was that cocktail waitress yeah, that's, 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 that's that's very on brand new jersey <laughs> is that someone you've met <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's someone you know personally is that a family member? <laughs> no well i gotta be honest like i never drank or smoked or anything like that i was but i have a ballsy side to me yeah so that, there's a little bit of martha she lets me have that ballsy <laughs> side that i maybe the cheryl chase side is more demure no. <laughs> uh, Eric, go on. Yeah, I always wanted to know, um, do they, do you record all um, the vocals first and then they draw it or did they draw it and you try to match their faces? Like, what is the order of that? The, the writers write the scripts. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the writers and the producers get into a room and they pitch different ideas of what would be good. And then once they decide what stories they want to do, then the writers you know they're assigned what what story they're gonna write and then after that's done then uh they bring in the rec then we record the script mm -hmm. and after the recording then uh the artists they they draw they listen to our um uh our dialogue in the ears and then they draw oh wow it. and then they send it overseas you know to do the animating so, okay wow and do you, yeah. is there a lot of like do they listen to it and is there a lot of back and forth like you need to re-record like they said you said this can like we add this line after is there a lot of that yeah, yeah they okay. have they have that it's called uh pickup yeah you do pickups yeah, okay it's called pickups and uh then and then a lot of adr which is adr is is when um the cartoon like is almost done and you're watching the cartoon but there's certain dialogues that you have to add in so i have to watch the cartoon and i listen to the beeps and then i add the missing dialogue to oh, the wow. cartoon wow so, cool. a bit of improv then yeah no they tell you what they no oh, you can't okay. tell. they tell you what you have to say oh, okay so it's like yeah. add this in <laughs> yeah everything is timed Sure. Were were your parents okay with you pursuing this? Oh um, yeah, they were. Oh, yeah, they were fine. So, was there any? Was there a plan B, or it was strictly acting and voice acting? Was there anything else like you were you were a fallback plan? Well, um, I when I went to um, initially when I <coughs> when I went to school college, I wanted to uh, be um, an early childhood education teacher mm -hmm. and. Um, then it changed to um, teaching acting to deaf children. I don't know where oh. that came from. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. But um, so, I, but then I realized, why do I want to be in a classroom teaching something that I want to do personally? Hmm. So that's when I switched my majors to strictly acting, and then that's how I pursued my goals in voiceover and acting that way. That's so. really cool. Speaking of college, you're speaking to two Raritan Valley Community College alumni here. Oh, very Eric and I. Nice. <laughs> very they, nice. they call it Harvard on the Hill, you know. <laughs> but it, 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 what did you guys study? Uh, communication. So basically, anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I was there for business. Oh, wow. Very nice. Very yeah, I ended up bad. going to a writer <laughs> university oh. in Lawrenceville. Yeah. Cool, very cool, you guys. Come on, Ellie. My dad got an MBA from Fairleigh Dickinson. Okay, so you know. Oh well, you're you're amped up on the business skills, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, sh yeah, Cheryl. My my career is a little more difficult. I pursued a rap career that didn't go anywhere, and uh, I ended up uh, doing this. <laughs> well, well, no, that's wonderful. I think that's cool. As long as you're having fun and Absolutely. you're successful, then that's what's all that matters. Absolutely. And podcasts uh, are so big nowadays. Yeah, it is. it is. It's fun to do, and we get to talk to you know people we grew up watching or listening to, which is really the coolest part. Um, how much of Angelica did you know was going to be like the... Eat, like the villain character and how cool was that to play like the evil baby who was kind of like a menace oh it was so fun back in the day like when you guys were watching it yeah um angelica was 
such a demon. Yeah. And that, and yeah, she, she was so mean. <laughs> she was so mean. I mean, you, when you watch some of those episodes, you can't believe it. There's this one, I think it was called the Grand the Grand Canyon. And, and and Angelica is sitting in the back and she's she's in her car seat and she's holding Cynthia and she's saying Cynthia, to Cynthia, Cynthia you need a nap so take a nap and she, she <laughs> throws <laughs> Cynthia down on the floor <laughs> I mean I thought my gosh that's yeah you were you were making children cry all across America <laughs> yes, I know. she also tried to make a watermelon seed explode in Chucky's stomach in an episode. <laughs> oh, see, no, I missed that one. I don't remember that one. So that's probably a later episode, right? I, yeah, I, I don't recall exactly, like, what seasons everything was there. But yeah. um, what, what's really cool is how long this show has lasted, yeah. right? Like, they did oh, the whole growing up, and it's still growing on Paramount. How important is the work environment for that to like m be a mainstay? How cool is it? Are you still friends with? Is everyone cordial still? Like it must be oh, such yeah. a good work environment to have no. I'm sure there's been problems every now and then, like most workplaces. But like, is everyone just like tight knit at this point? Yeah, yeah. We all we're it's great. We have the great spirit between us, and uh, we really enjoy being together. Um. Uh, I mean, what, see, now how we work, uh, I work, we all work separately. With, oh, with, okay. We have our separate recording times, and we come into this, the recording studio. You have the engineer in his room, and you're in the booth. And um, nowadays, last time, last week when I went in, Kate, the producer, Kate Boudelier, the, the executive producer, she was there. And some other producers were there and some other, you know, casting people. They were all there. Whereas before, everything is on Zoom. So how I work is um, I'm with Charlie Adler. He's this fantastic voiceover, uh, the voice director. He directs the voices. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's at home and he's on the screen. So I'm working with him as I'm reading my lines. Okay. So but... Um, yeah, uh, no, we're all a close night bunch. We love each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, go on, about Alex. That when you're reading your lines. So, like, let's say, you know, Angelica has a lot of dialogue with Susie, or, you know, she's talking a lot of shit to Tommy and Chucky, you know? Yeah. So when you're doing those, like, scenes, those to back and forth, is it easier to kind of be in the same studio with the other voice actor? Or, this, or is it, can they send you their dialogue and you just respond to it? Or which do you prefer? How does that even work? You know what? It's really fun to be able to act with the other actors. Sure. But, but we don't do that. We used oh. to. We used to. Okay. Um, but the but Charlie plays the other roles. He reads me their lines. Oh sure, oh. okay. You can respond to them. I respond to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when when you guys you saw the huge success, obviously the merchandise started to come out. Um, you don't have to answer this at all. But did you guys get a percentage of like the merch and things like that, or did you have to negotiate? Uh, we the only money we get for merchandise is if our voice is on there. Okay. Uh, yes. So yeah, I mean, and see, back in the day, there was tons of merchandise, mm -hmm. and um, there was. You remember the um, Angelica karaoke doll? Yes. Yeah. I didn't well, have yeah. it, but I remember it. You had it. <laughs> oh yeah, you had I, it. I, I know it. I didn't have it. it. Was it. It was next to my MC Hammer doll. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I went in to record, and um, I did all the songs and everything. And then um, the Rosie O'Donnell had a show. She had her talk show at that yeah. time. Yes. She, she was a major fan of Angelica. I mean, in fact, she even had me on. Um, she, well, that's another story. Wait, first I'll get through this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so uh, Susan Sarandon was in um, Rugrats in Paris. So another she, New Jersey native, by the way, Matucci. Yes, yeah. exactly. She. Yeah, and I'll that 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 I have another story for that. <laughs> All right, let's yes. go. Uh, so uh, Rosie O'Donnell had um, um, what's her name? Um, Susan, Susan Sarandon. Sarandon. Yes, had her had her on the show, and she, and uh, Susan brought in an Angelica karaoke doll to 
to the uh, to as a present for Rosie. So Rosie had that doll on her desk for over a month, and because of that, the uh, the um, it was major advertising, and so the doll. I mean, it made um, two million dollars for nickel uh, for for. Um, and and uh, I mean, you know, it's been a long time. I'll tell you, I don't care. Uh, just because of that, just because it made two million dollars, one day I got a check in the mail for sixty grand because it made nice. two million dollars. Just wow. sitting on a desk, like yeah, just... just sitting on a desk, and I, you know, it, it's fun to get stuff like that in the mail. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolute best mail ever. Are you all, kidding me? All, all I, I get is bills to pay. I, <laughs> I get those too. <laughs> yeah. My friend, my friend's sister had that doll, and it's all coming back to me. She used to play, and you'd hear ice cream is my favorite treat, favorite treat, or was it pizza? What, do you remember any of them? <laughs> oh yeah, that's so funny. Susan, Sar Susan Sarandon did, never did voiceover before in a movie. So I had to act with her so it would be more organic for her. Sure. Um, so it was, she had her French teacher there and she was very nice, very, uh, very sweet to work with. And I, it, it was a thrill for me because I was a big fan of hers. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, Paramount, they treat you like gold when they, when, you know, when you're doing, when you're promoting a movie, you know, I had to do for the first Rugrats movie, um, the Rugrats movie, I did a five city tour all over the country and man, Paramount was, oh, they treat you like gold. I mean, five star hotels and, and I was in this one Chicago hotel, like on the 15th floor. I was having a bubble bath. I had my chocolate covered <laughs> strawberries, my champagne that I didn't even, that I didn't drink. But I, I, re but I remember when I was there, I, the, the, I heard a doorbell and I thought, what the heck, there's this doorbell? My room had a doorbell and the butler came to the room and said, ma'am, do you need anything? Can I get you anything? And I, of course I had my robe on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I didn't go to the, you know, but it, it was, it was quite amazing. Wow. Your feet didn't touch the floor when you were promoting movies for Paramount. Now, this wow. was fresh off of Susan Sarandon's role where she should have won an Oscar stepmom, in my opinion, which was yeah. her, one of her greatest performances ever. One of my favorite movies of all time, actually, just throwing that out there. Yeah, she she was amazing. I have to, I t I did see that movie. I have to tell you, I kind of forgot a little bit oh, of it. I see it's it, sad I remember movie. it. It's a sad movie. Uh, Julia it? Roberts and her, yeah, and Ed Harris were in it. Very sad oh, movie. I'll have very, to check that out. Very I'll have good. To check it out. Random question: Did you ever find pizza as good as New Jersey out in California, or did you miss it? Um, no, it's not. You know, I love New York pizza. And, yeah. and and the Manville pe and the Manville and of course the Chi Chi's pizza. Yeah. Rest in peace, Chiches. Yes, yeah, rest, in, rest in peace. There's, um, you can't, you can't get that out here to me. I I don't know. It just doesn't taste <laughs> the same. It really you can't. Doesn't. You can't. No. Every, everyone, bread. From, everyone who's been out in California for a while, I always ask that. It's just I'm always curious about that. They all have the same answer. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah I, I have a Jersey native question. Do you call it pork roll or Taylor ham? Wait, say that again. Pork roll pork or what? Taylor ham. Taylor ham? Yeah. What, what do you call pork, it? Pork, pork roll. I've right. Never, okay. Yeah, I've never heard of Taylor ham. No. Good. Yeah, keep <laughs> yeah. it that way. Yeah, you're <laughs> welcome to the show. Why, it's not bad? <laughs> well, it's like, you know, it's like a, a big debate here. It it's really split, is. It's split on the map. I think North Jersey, Central and North Jersey is, uh, I think we're pork roll, and I think South is Taylor Ham or it's Switch. I forget which way yeah. it goes, but we're Central Jersey, so we do both. Cheryl, yeah. Cheryl uh, I, I saw you wrote a children's book. Uh, I want to talk about your transitioning into like doing that, wanting to be an author. Like, Was that something you always wanted to do? Or, or as you started doing the voice acting, uh, interacting you know, in a children's show more, you're like, oh, I could, I could go this route. Yeah, I mean, I just love to be creative, and I mm -hmm. love writing, and I love um, children, and you know, my cartoon. I mean, I'm in the children's business, so yeah, it, it just made sense to me. And everybody was saying, you know, you should write a children's book, so I, I did. <laughs> um, so I, I have one. My first book was that's Kula Tallulah, and I took that from 
Angelica and 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 um, uh, Cynthia, where Angelica is the bad girl, Cynthia is her little good girl. And I thought, why can't you have a a, a doll and a and a little girl where the doll is the bad girl and 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 the the child is the good girl? So that's basically what my Tulula, my um, that's cool. Tulula is about. It's about her doll getting her into trouble. Um, you know, with mommy um, in the house while it rains, and she's like messing the house up and everything. But, but uh, my my sec my second book, I'm real excited about. It's gonna it's called Chirpy Burpy, and it's being um, illustrated right now, and uh, it, it should be coming out like in January. And um, yeah, it's for three to five year olds. It's going to be a book series, and I hope to. Uh, I, you know, because I'm writing the second one right now. There's going to be, you know, more than one Chirpy Burpy book, but uh, it's, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a passion of mine. I love writing children's stories. That's good. It's cool that you could take, you know, thirty. What are you? Thirty years on the Rugrats? It's been yeah, 30, thirty years. Yeah, thirty wow. years. Can you? That's believe amazing. That? No, I can't. It may. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's just like time flies and I don't like it. I don't yeah. like how fast time does. Yeah. It bothers yeah. me. Now, were you, were you aware Angelica was voted as like number seven on the greatest cartoon characters of all time, like 20 years ago as a TV yeah. guide? How I amazing know. was that? Like, that's why yeah, that I like was, Homer I Simpson, was... Cartman, Bugs Bunny. Like, you're right there. You're right I there. I know, number seven. I, I, I remember that. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic. I was so honored. Very honored. Yeah. yeah that's so cool. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It, it, Angelica was one of the characters you appreciated when you got older, how diabolic she was. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, if we look back on, like, as a kid growing up, it's like, this, this girl is just not a favorite character. But then as you get older, it's like looking back. What a great character she yeah, was. Yeah, she's funny. It's funny. Yeah, she really and, was funny. So and, she, and it's all it's always fun to play the bad girl. It really Absolutely. is. It's freeing, you know, because you don't really act that way in real life, but you get away with it in a cartoon. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't get away with it at all in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> was there just, was there anything that um, they wanted her to do, but they cut it because they said it was too mean? Um, the, in the beginning, um, from what I'm sure there's a lot of things, um, in the beginning that she used to say, you know, oh, you little bald idiot or you <laughs> stupid, you know, she used to call stupid babies instead of dumb babies. She used to say, but there was, they came cracked down and they say, no, we can't say stupid. Boo. Uh, a bald late idiot. So they did kind of tone down the language a little bit. Imagine that. getting on a baby for not having enough hair. Like, <laughs> like a baby, you bald idiot. Bald idiot you know? That's amazing. I should have kept that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I know it is funny. I like it myself. I'm gonna yeah. start calling people. I'm just gonna start calling people that who are bald and stupid around. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, hey, yeah. Bald idiot. <laughs> uh, I know you probably get asked this, and once again, um, I'll, we'll let you go soon because I know it's it's. It's so cool you even got an hour with us put up. What's your favorite episode? Um, I have a couple. Um the old the old versions. Um I like remember when Angelica um broke her leg. Well she pretended to break her leg mm -hmm. and so she was at Stu and Dee Dee's house in the bed. Getting and waited on. Yeah, yes. waited on yeah. Hands and foot. Yeah, yeah, I love that episode. Yeah, she, she was driving Drew crazy. He was making pudding in the yes. at 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm yes. living all of my life. Yeah, so, oh, that was so, a great yeah, one. That, that was hysterical. And then um, the trial where um, she breaks the clown lamp and then she has to be the uh, attorney. That's a great so, one, too. Yeah, that's a really good one. And then, like, for the newer episodes, I like this one episode where um, – Angelica gets a doll that's a lifelike doll that talks like it sounds like her and it looks like her and you can play with it like it's a real child this doll and so the babies they end up liking the doll more than they want to play with the doll <coughs> the doll and they don't want to play with Angelica and Angelica will not stand for that 
Oh, well, no. So, so that, that's a really cool um, uh, new ep- newer episode. If, if I had to go back, I enjoyed the Ice Cream Mountain one and the one where Angelica falls in love with that guy, Dean. Oh, the, yeah, like, the little right? motorcycle guy. I think that was one of my favorite ones growing oh, up. I thought it was yeah, hilarious. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a fun one. Yeah. The, the Passover special. Every time I hear Maccabees, I think Maccabees. Cheryl, any last... Uh, any questions, Roundtable, Ellie, if you got any? No, I. if we're talking about the episodes we love, I love the Rugrats go to Las Vegas. That one's probably one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, that was really, that on their vacation? Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then, um, Eric, you got anything? If not, I'm we'll good. let uh, Cheryl give us an update. Once again, thank you very much for coming on. I mean, this was so cool. Oh, if my pleasure. If you're ever in Jersey again... Get in touch. We'll go. We'll go eat Manville Pizza together. Yes, bring back old times. I will let you know. <laughs> I, I heard they make a good pepperoni with hot honey on it. I heard that's their thing now. Hot yeah. honey. Hot honey mm-hmm. on pepperoni pie, and I oh, heard it's I don't amazing. Know about that. Is I, that's, that's, amazing? Is that's what I heard. Changer. I don't know. It's I've dangerous. never had. Yep. I've never had it from there. So we'll find out eventually. Um, yeah, what and, else? And you so, let me know. I will. What do you have coming up? Uh, you have the book coming up. Uh, where can we catch the Rugrats? Uh, anything special you got? Well, you can catch the Rugrats on Paramount Plus, <clears throat> on on you know on Paramount Plus, and um, uh, yeah, and I'm I'm just you know working on doing my my acting on camera acting thing and working on the book, and in six months from now, I probably will have a lot more to talk about. So if you want me to come on, I'll come on. Cheryl, we do. I do an Instagram live every year of our, book. of our Why? Christmas special, and we oh. like to have guests pop on and talk about Christmas and what they're doing. So if you're willing to hop on uh, a Christmas oh. special, and we'll keep in touch. Oh yeah, keep in touch. My birthday's on Christmas. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I don't do it. I don't do it on Christmas, but we we'll wish you a happy yeah, birthday. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, that's no, so. Sure, cool. That'll be fun. Um, we mentioned off off air. Uh, we got in touch last November and it finally just the timing worked out. Yes. And, um, so I really appreciate it. I have your email, follow us on, we follow each other on Twitter, I believe. So we'll stay in touch. Uh, Let's thank stay you. in touch, Scott. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. We're Jersey okay. strong here. Jersey pride. Hey, Jersey strong. <laughs> <laughs> bye, Cheryl. Thank Bye-bye. you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.